Hello, my friends. God bless all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. He blesses you with understanding. He opens your understanding. He has the mercy and compassion to make you understand His Word. This is the biggest of blessings. The biggest of blessings is not the healing of an infirmity, although it is necessary. It is not to gain money, to have a job, to have a guarantee of the future here on earth. This is not the greatest of blessings. The greatest blessing is for you to understand the Word of God, for you to apply it in your life. And when a person understands the Word of God, it is a revelation which God gives to you personally. It's the Holy Spirit who makes one understand His Holy Word and obviously He will practice it because He understood the will of God for His life. This is the greatest blessing which a person can receive. But at that time, in the time of Jesus, when Jesus walked amongst the people and preached His Word, there was a group of people who were not religious, better, who were not people who were unbelieving. No, there were unbelievers there as well. But, The group whom I want to refer to, the group of people who I'm referring to, is the group of Jews, religious Jews, Jews who taught the Bible, but they did not practice. They were the Pharisees. Those who would find in Jesus an enemy, an enemy of their faith. Now, Jesus was the bread which came from heaven to the whole world. But the Jews, the religious, the hard-headed, the stubborn, the blind of understanding of everything, those Jews today today are those who call themselves believers in Jesus. Unfortunately, many naturally, not all. Look, pay attention to what I want to say to you, to where I want to get to. Jesus said the following, to these religious Jews. I shall be with you a little while longer and then I will go to him who sent me, meaning he's going to the Father. You, Jesus said to the Jews, you will seek me and not find me. Jesus spoke to those Jews the hard-headed. You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Then the Jews said amongst themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he said? You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. This were the questions which the Jews, 
the Jews, the Jews, the Jews are those who know the Torah, who know the Bible. They know the words of Moses, the prophets, the kings, the wisdom of Solomon. They had a vast knowledge, a profound knowledge of the sacred scripture of the Old Testament. But all the knowledge which they had of the Old Testament did not make them understand. It would not make them perceive, perceive. It would not make them understand, meaning everything from the mind, everything in the intellect. It would not make them understand, not make them perceive, not make them comprehend. They knew. They knew of the Word of God. But they did not understand because all the prophets, Moses and all the prophets, all the kings who were of God, spoke of Jesus. They announced Jesus. Isaiah, for example, there in chapter 53, speaks about Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. And many Jews today, today, the 21st century, ignore the scripture of Isaiah 53. They just ignore it. Why? Why? This is the question, and I will answer shortly. So Jesus, continuing here, answering those Jews, said, You will seek me and not find me. Not find me. And then comes the question, but why? Prophet Jeremiah, through Prophet Jeremiah, God says, You shall seek me and find me. Why does God say something in the Old Testament and His Son says another in the New Testament? Are they contradicting each other? No. There in Jeremiah, the Father said, You will seek me and find me when you seek with all your heart, all your heart. Now Jesus is speaking to the Jews who knew the Bible well. You shall seek me and you shall not find me. And you will not find me. And he said no. And where I am, you cannot come. I understand that Jesus was saying this to those people who did not want to hear the Word of God. They did not want to hear the Word of God. Those people were attached to religion, to religiousness. Those people were attached to the customs of religion. They would keep the feast of the first fruits. They would keep the Sabbath. They would not eat the meat of pork. They would not do this or that. But everything that was easy to obey, easy to obey to keep the Sabbath, Difficult is to love your neighbor. Difficult is to love God. It's easy not to eat the meat of pork. Difficult 
it to stop having the eyes of an adulterer. It's easy to fulfill certain religious obligations. Today, we have the same situation. Certainly, many who are watching me this moment are of faith, we could say. Because they are people who already baptized. Remember, yesterday I spoke of this. The young lady said, Oh, Bishop, I baptized six times and nothing happened. Meaning, she fulfilled commandments, obligations, but did not fulfill the spiritual because it's easy to be baptized in water. It's easy for you to get there and say, Look, Pastor, I want to be baptized. I am re repented from my sins. I want to die to this world. Baptize me here. Bury me here. And the pastor does it. It's easy for you to do this. It's easy for the pastor as well to execute his will. Difficult is to die to yourself. Difficult is to die to your own heart, your own desires, your own lust, your own dreams. Difficult is to detach from a son, a daughter, mother, father, husband, wife, family, from your own reputation. Difficult is to remove the heart from the filth which is this world. This is difficult. Difficult is to detach yourself totally, radically from the rubbish which is this world and the society of this world, the corruption and injustice of this world, from the filth of this world, from the sin of this world. This is difficult. This is difficult. That is why Jesus said to the Jews, And where I am, you cannot come. You will seek me, but you will not find me. And within the church today, inside the churches, including the universal church of the kingdom of God, there are many people who seek the Lord Jesus, but don't find him. They don't find him. And why don't they find him? Because he doesn't want to reveal himself to them. No, it's not that. It's that they are seeking Jesus with their hearts attached to the things of this world. They are attached to the house, their family members, loved ones, attached to things, to money, to lies, to corruption, to adultery, theft, and all kinds of evil and sin. So when a person is attached to sin, or when one is attached to his own heart, his own passions, his own desires, his own dreams, which were not fulfilled, uh, they say, I haven't fulfilled my dreams yet. Meaning, their dreams are more important, they have been more important than the dream of meeting the Lord Jesus. So these people keep on crawling, dragging themselves inside the church day and night without ceasing. And they do night vigils and they are baptized in water. And they are people who are even good. They are even charitable. But this does not resolve the matter. My friend, charity is extremely important. Jesus said, Give them what to eat. Speaking to the disciples, give the people what to eat. The universal church, in a certain manner, has been doing this within its limits. We have done this. But this is not enough. It does not mean that the church is perfect. No, this is not difficult to do, isn't it? The religious also are like this. 
the religious are used to doing that which they manually can do. But what is spiritual, obedience to the word of God, to deny themselves, to take up the cross and walk and follow the footsteps of Jesus, that's when things start to get difficult. People, they want salvation, they want Jesus, they want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, but they don't want to leave their lusts, their dreams, their desires, their sins. Because sin, for them, is sweet like honey. However, they know when it reaches the stomach, in the mouth it's tasty like honey, but when it reaches the stomach, it is bitter. It is written in the sacred scripture. It's not my wisdom. It's not my philosophy. It is written in the sacred scriptures. People do not want to detach from the honey, the flavor of honey, which is sin, in the beginning, which gives pleasure. Why? Because it is very delicious, very tasty. They prefer to eat of sin, to drink of sin, than to truthfully be where Jesus is, which is to live in spirit, which is to be in spirit. So Jesus is speaking here to the Jews. You will seek me and not find me. You will not find me. And Jesus is saying to you here, my friend, Jesus is saying to you, my friend, not me, I'm just preaching the word, I'm repeating the words of Jesus, I'm prophesying. But you, who live in sin, you also certainly will not find Jesus. While you live in sin, you will not find Jesus. That is why you already baptize, you go to church, you conduct a fast, you participate of night vigils, but everything you do, everything you do in the church is in the second place. The first place is your lover. In the first place is your heart. In the first position of your life is your sin. And then, you become a religious person. You know, just as the Jews, you know the scriptures of Moses, the prophets, but to them, salvation was not revealed to, because they were before God Himself, the Lord Jesus, and did not recognize Him. They did not recognize Him. This happens as well to those who are watching me right now. They see the miracles of Jesus. They see the transformation. People who once were in prison, condemned for so long, but God set them free from prison, restored their lives. People who were thieves, assassins, people who were robbers, people who were cruel, today are holy, men and women of God, who preach the word inside the prison. And they say to those who are in prison, look, I've been there, I know what you're going through. My life was like this, this and this. I was far worse than you. How many did you kill? How many did you kill? Look, I killed three. Very well. I killed ten. I was cruel. I was evil, perverse. But God changed me. He changed my mind. The Holy Spirit came upon me. 
And today, I fight to save those who are lost. Do you know why? Because I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. I left my life of crime. I left. I determined. I don't want this anymore. I will no longer live like this. I will no longer live out of drugs. Because when you determine to not do something and you go with all your strength, you can. Of course, when a person determines but with the heart still attached to those things, he will continue in sin. But when he is determined, he has faith to let go the filth of this world which they're attached to. They have faith. Then the Holy Spirit comes to help and give strength for this and to change your life and to make them see that He is no longer together with them, but inside of them, which is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The Jews saw Jesus doing miracles, resurrecting the dead, healing the lepers, giving sight to the blind, forgiving the adulterous woman, they saw God Himself before them. They saw, but still, they ended up arresting Him, judging Him, and killing Him. Why? Because their spiritual eyes were blind. Their understanding was blind. And this is what has happened with many who are watching me this moment. Come on, Bishop. But I get up at night. I pray to God. I ask for the Holy Spirit. Yes, excellent what you're doing. You are fighting. But if you don't leave your sins behind, then this is pointless. You need to know the following. You need to understand the following. No one can serve two masters. You cannot serve sin and God at the same time. You can't serve sin and God. So if you insist in serving sin and living in sin, then it's pointless for you to keep on praying, fasting, going to church. No, nothing will resolve that. You will hear the word. It will be good to you. It will strengthen you, but it will not solve anything because your problem is your sin. The problem of mankind is sin. It is sin. It is sin. This disgraceful sin. And I can say this to you. Sin leads people to death. Sin is what disgraced this world which made humanity to develop in this which we are saying, injustice, perversity, and evil, and all kinds of evil. It is sin. When a person, when a person understands this and determines, I will no longer live in this rubbish of sin, I will leave my lover, I will leave my lover, a person truthfully needs to be strong. They need to take their eyes out of the lover. To stop gaining a lot of money, they'll have to stop stealing, stop lying, stop deceiving. Oh, Bishop, but wait a minute. I'm benefited. I even help others. It does not matter what you do of good with the corrupt money. It does not matter. Corruption is from the devil. Let me say something to you. Let me get closer to you. Please, excuse me. Pay attention. Pay close attention. When a person sins, their conscience starts to accuse because they know that they've sinned. And because of this, they live in doubt. And while they are in sin, they will be in doubt. And while that person is in doubt, they will lose. The devil will overcome that person. 
The devil will overwhelm them and overcome them. The devil cannot overcome those who have a clean conscience. They live in the purity of a clean, honest and upright life with God. Which is faith. But how can a person have faith in God if their mind, their conscience is in sin? is accusing them and saying, look, you sinned, you made a mistake, you messed up, you know this. So that evil conscious will not allow the good conscious. Either it's evil or good, the conscious. If it is bad, there is a sin. It's sick. It's under infirmity. Then that means faith will not work. Faith does not work. Why does it not work? Because they are in sin. So they keep asking for prayers, A, B, C, Bishop, pray for me, but why don't you pray for yourself? No, but you deserve more than I do. No, it's not about merit or deserving. No, it's because you're in doubt. You have no assurance that your prayer will be answered. So you ask others to pray for you. This is the reality. So pay close attention. Sin is what makes you to be defeated. Sin is what makes you weak, fragile, debilitated. Sin is what makes you to be depressed. You are depressed because you lost so and so, the other. You lost money, you lost your family. Why did you lose? You lost. Due to a situation or another, you lost. But you lost because your heart was attached to that person or those people. But Bishop, come on, what can I do now? You can't do anything. It already happened. But free yourself from this attachment to things. Free yourself from this vain attachment. Free yourself from the attachments of loved ones, from family members, from your reputation, from your name. Free yourself from your heart. Maybe your heart is attached to anything in this world because while your heart is attached to anything in this world, then there your sin will be. That is why when Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God, meaning seek the Lord Jesus, the Lord King, that he may reign in your life, in your heart, to control your being. This is the kingdom of God. When he reigns within us, then we have the conscience of what is right, what is wrong, and we do what is right. We obey then we live a clean life in peace. We only have peace when we are with a clean conscience. We only have peace when we are living according to the will of God. We only have peace while the Holy Spirit is reigning in our mind, in our being, in our lives. While he is not in us, we will not be at ease, at peace. So that is why the Jews were intrigued. Wait, where is he going? Which we can't go. What does this mean? You shall seek me and not find me. That's it. They did not receive the revelation. To them was not given the revelation that Jesus Christ is the only Lord and Savior, that the Lord Jesus Christ, it was God who spoke to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, who guided Moses, who raised Moses, who did all the work of the deliverance of the people of Israel. It was the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself, Son of the Most High. But they don't understand this. And you, perhaps, are inside the universal church, and you get baptized in water, you don't eat certain food, you don't eat or drink the blood of animal because you know it's a sin, 
You don't eat shurisu. I don't eat it. You don't eat shurisu. You keep the Sabbath. Instead of keeping it on Saturday, you keep it on Sunday. You can keep the Sabbath. You can keep Sunday any day of the week. As long as one day you keep it reserved for the Lord God. But you do this, you do that, the other. And it's easy to do. Difficult is to have your conscience clean and light in peace. Peace with yourself and above all with God. This is difficult. Difficult because of the attachment which you have towards sin. You know that this company, this friendship which you have, you know that this person whom is with you, who is staying with you, you know it's wrong. You know that this bad company which you have are leading you to sin. But you insist. You continue. You want to please them. You prefer to please them than to please the Father, than to please God. Then you seek the Holy Spirit and you don't receive. You seek but you don't receive. You fast, but you don't receive because you don't want to let go of your sin. That's it. Do you understand, my friend? Jesus said to those Jews, Excuse me. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek with all your heart. The heart cannot be divided, not even a percentage, not even 0,01% can be in anything in this world, if not in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you surrender this heart to Him, then you have there your treasure and you live of that treasure day after day after day. The daily bread of each day will be enough for you every single day, especially with the peace of the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow we will speak more about this. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.